welcome to this lecture on Adobe Illustrator by Eduonics Technologies. Today we're going to be talking about Adobe Illustrator for just a little bit, its history and its background. Then we're going to quickly move into what makes Adobe Illustrator, what it is, um, the kind of editing program it is, um, and we might take a look at some of the interface and some basically of, of the layout. As you can see on my screen, I have Illustrator up, and I also have an image up. Illustrator was first developed for Macintosh in 1986 and sold in 1987, so that's almost 30 years. And what you're looking at right here is the original Adobe Illustrator version 1.1. and the simple interface. As you can see, you don't have nearly as much stuff as I have up here with Illustrator CS6. So it's come a long way. Um, Illustrator was originally developed as a commercialization of Adobe's in-house font development software in PostScript file format. It was meant to go with Adobe Photoshop, and still today, if there's two editing programs you're going to have by Adobe for um, images in general, image creation, it's going to be Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop. So, not to bore you with too much history, as you can see, it's come a long way. So, let's get into what's different about Adobe Illustrator what makes it what it is. It's a vector editing program and vectors use points and lines um, and coordinates to create shapes basically math to draw the shape out on the screen and raster is just a pixel by pixel representation of an image where each pixel has color, transparency and other properties that are used to render the image. There's not a whole lot of math involved in those. I'm going to create a rectangle and all this is doing is creating four points which are coordinates and instructing Illustrator to draw lines in between them. If you were to look in the code and decipher it you would see a bunch of numbers, a bunch of um, points and coordinates. If I draw a square, you can see the four points up here, and basically that's all that's in the file right now. Even if I make it solid, there's four points. and lines in between them and instructions to make the square black. So basically it's just a bunch of instructions as opposed to raster images which is a very literal interpretation of an image pixel by pixel. One of the benefits of Illustrator versus Photoshop is that Illustrator saves a lot of memory, saves a lot of size, file size. Vector files are orders of magnitude smaller than raster files in general. In addition, it can be scaled up to any size, whereas with Photoshop and raster images, they're made out of pixels, so when you scale them up, all you're doing is making the pixels bigger. Whereas if you scale this square up, for example, let's zoom out a little bit. If I scale this square up, all I'm doing is moving the points farther apart. The computer is is saying, hey, make these points farther apart and draw a longer line in between them and fill the whole thing with black. Same thing as if I moved it smaller. It'd be saying, make them closer together, draw lines in between them and fill the whole thing with black. So it's still four points, four lines, and filled with black. 
if I save this as an EPS, an SVG, or an AI file, it's going to be very small because it's just instructions on how to create this little square. Whereas if I had this in a raster editing program like Photoshop, if I made this very big with an original document size that was really large, it would be really large because there'd be a pixel here, 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 and on, which takes up a lot of memory and the files are huge. So the two biggest benefits to using Adobe Illustrator is that you can scale the images to whatever you want. So if you were making a design or an illustration and you wanted it to be on a billboard or a giant sign, you don't have to worry or completely redraw it. You can just scale it up. It's almost just uh, five or six keystrokes, a couple mouse clicks. If you were making something in Adobe Photoshop, you have to choose your initial size and you kind of have to stick with that. You can make things bigger or smaller with raster images, but like I said before, they'll start to get distorted. So enough of that boring stuff, let's get into the program itself. So what you see in front of you is a number of things. I have a panel right here and all of my panels are on the right side typically. Of course you can change it around however you want. Um, and your tools are on the left side. Tools are things used for drawing, editing, that kind of thing. And panels are used to manipulate the properties of objects. Over here you have your panels. When you click one of them, it pops out with Illustrator CS6 and some previous versions. This whole docking system in general has become very sophisticated, but you'll notice a lot of similarities as you go back previous versions almost all the way back. So you have your panels here and they can also be accessed up in window and this is virtually the only thing this menu item is for. It's for accessing panels. It's also for workspaces which we'll explain a little bit later. Right now as you can see I'm on the default workspace. So if you can't find it over here just go up to window and find whatever you need and we'll get into more of what these do a little bit later. Over here you have the tools. Just a quick overview of the tools and what all of this means. This rectangle that I'm hovering my mouse over, these are all tools for manipulation and for drawing and for creation in general. They're tools that you use with your mouse directly in the artboards. Right underneath here we have fill and stroke. Underneath here, we have some default fill options and default stroke options. And right under here, we have the drawing order. This is if you want to change screen mode. I really don't use very much of this. Sometimes I use the drawing order, drawing behind, drawing inside. Um, but mostly what you're going to be using is the stroke and fill as well as these tools. Now, you notice some of these have a carrot on the bottom of them. You probably already know what that means, but basically if I click on it and hold it in, I have an option of tools to select from. So, you would click a tool over here, just like I did before, and draw out whatever you want to. And I could go over here to, for example, make the stroke bigger. And I would come over here and let's say I want to make it kind of a 
rounder, softer top, I would use a tool again. Like I said, they're for drawing and creation, typically. So I just made a piece of toast. And over here, if I wanted that piece of toast to have an inside stroke, see I'm editing the piece of toast essentially right now, if I wanted it to be a dashed line. So it doesn't follow 100%, but that's basically the difference between these two sides. And as we go through these tutorials, we'll explain everything in them. So one of the newer features to Illustrator is up here. It's the control panel. And it's pretty amazing. It combines the features of each panel that are the most relevant to the tool that you're using at the time. So you don't have to keep going over here, selecting a new panel. For example, I have the pencil tool out right now, but let's select the square tool again, the rectangle tool. And I'm going to delete the toast and draw another rectangle. And as you can see up here, all of the options have changed based on the fact that I have this new tool. And that's amazingly convenient. I don't have to open up a bunch of panels on the left or on the right side and I don't have to constantly be going back and forth. So this automatically displays the most relevant properties to what you're doing. So you'll be using the control panel a lot. Remember how I changed the stroke earlier on the right side? I can just do it right here. And I know my panel is still open over here, but let's say I had something else open or I was really far zoomed. Maybe I don't have enough room for all these panels, um, and I want to change everything up here. So, if you look down here, you'll notice that we also have some very generous scroll bars. Whenever you start with a new document in Illustrator, it usually gives you a lot of extra working space, and that's what all this dark gray is. The white in the middle is the canvas or the printable area, and so you can put stuff in the dark gray area. You don't have to worry about it printing. It's very useful. You can store objects there without having them get in the way. So I can keep certain shapes that I want to use later. Let's just pretend these are more complex and I didn't just have to draw them that easily. I could keep this out of the way so it's not printing and um, drag it in whenever I want. And I can also have things kind of hanging off the side. Basically the canvas will automatically print, although you can print everything on the canvas and the workspace, but generally the canvas is your working area. So basically that's how the artboards work and that's how uh, that's the difference between the white and the gray space. So down here you have something I consider kind of useless. It's just telling me what the tool that I'm using is. But I can change it to show a number of useful things. And we have the uh, menu up here. And the menu typically corresponds to everything we've gone over so far, although there's a few options that are specific to the menu. And um, since I'm using a later version of Adobe, I have access to Adobe Bridge. And I don't know why they put this there, but you can arrange your documents. It's really handy if you have a bunch of them open. So that's basically it. There's the control panel, which is like a combination of the best settings for the tools over here from the panels over here. It takes the best parts of these panels depending on the tool you're using and puts them all up here. So this is immensely useful. Then you have the tools. There's a lot of tools and we'll get into most of those.
or at least a lot of them. And then you have over here the panels. Basically used for editing manipulation, so that about does it with uh, just a basic look at the interface. Thanks for watching, and get ready because in the next videos, we're going to be learning a lot more about Illustrator.